So today we're going to take a look at Panasonic's DMW XLR1. This is an audio adapter that sits on top of the Panasonic GH5. It gives you more flexibility with audio. Number one, it lets you use XLR inputs. It also provides phantom power. And then it's an audio splitter, so it splits left and right channels, so you can use two microphones going directly into this camera, and you can control those audio levels individually. It basically sits on top of the hot shoe here, and then there's a lock on the back to lock it down. Now it does provide 48 volt phantom power, but there are no batteries required for this. It uses the power from the camera body, and so that's a great thing. You don't have to worry about charging or carrying extra batteries or worrying about other batteries going out. Um, this is all powered by the camera, so it's easy to manage. Taking a look, you have all of your main controls underneath the plastic door. Plastic door is great because once you set your levels, you drop this down. If you fiddle with your camera, you won't accidentally change any of your settings here. When we flip it around on the other side, we have two XLR inputs here, one for the left channel, one for the right channel. Now, if we take a closer look at some of the settings here, you have individual settings for both the left and the right. You can change inputs from one microphone or two microphones. Now, if you select one microphone, it'll automatically take the left channel and duplicate it to the right channel. If you want to run two different microphones, you set it to one, two, and then you can adjust each left and right individually, and you'll have two microphone recordings in camera. So we have three different settings, line, mic, and 48 volt phantom power. Obviously line is where the feed is coming into you. So it's the audio is already being sent somewhere, and then they're just sending that line out to you. Mic input obviously is from a microphone, but that's a microphone that is self-powered or has its own battery power. If you have a microphone that needs power, then you would use a 48 volt phantom power setting. There are also some low cut um, settings if you're dealing with wind noise at like kind of low end rumbling, you can try to use a low cut filter and that might help improve some of that. Now over here you have ALC and that's pretty much automatic level control. If you're in a run gun situation, you don't want to deal with levels, the camera can manage levels for you. So if things get too loud, it tries to bring it down. If it gets too low, it tries to bring it up. Sometimes that could be a little weird, but again, if you're not really relying on audio and you just kind of want general audio, let the camera deal with it itself. That's what ALC will do for you. It'll just kind of manage the levels for you. Otherwise, if you have it off, you can adjust gain settings through the two different dials. Remember, if you're using one microphone, you just adjust the gain on one. If you're using two individual microphones, you can adjust the levels individually. Now, if you're not using automatic level control and the volume is coming in too hot and you can't adjust it through the gain, you could use uh, negative 20 dB here or if the volume is coming in too low and you can't boost it up enough, you can use plus 20 dB and that kind of amplifies the signal. On top of the adapter, you still have a cold shoe so you can add your microphone. Here we have Asden's brand new uh, SGM 250CX. This is the new new right here. This is an XLR microphone. Uh, it's a great small shotgun microphone, comes with its own short XLR lead um, and it requires phantom power. So it's not self-powered. We're gonna plug this into input one. We would turn on phantom power for this microphone and this would be our setup right here. Aside from being able to add two different microphones and adjust levels individually, there are benefits to working with XLR. We can take this microphone off of this camera and we can bring it closer to the talent. So we can put this on a boom pole. We can add an extension cable, XLR extension cable, and do very long runs. Now you can run extension cables on 3.5, but those cables aren't designed for long runs. They're more prone to interference, so you get some noise. You'll pick up some noise, plus the signal will degrade. XLR will really get you those long runs and maintain that high quality audio. So if you don't want to deal with audio in post, you want to bring all the audio back into the camera, this is a good setup right here because you could still do run and gun because you have your microphone on the camera. In fact, if you want to go to two microphones, you could add wireless receivers to this or you could bring an XLR extension cable and just take the microphone off. So this, this right here is a, a smaller setup to travel with, but it'll let you do a lot more things than bringing a microphone directly on the camera with only a 3.5 input. This gives you a lot more flexibility. Now I mentioned there's probably a better way than using ALC if you're worried about trying to prevent your audio from clipping. Normally what I would do is I would take uh, my microphone, bring it closer to the talent obviously. I would run an XLR cable back to the adapter, but before going into the adapter, I would actually split my signal using the XLR splitter. So we'd take one microphone, but we'd send that same audio physically into both one and two. On the opposite side here, it would appear as if you had two microphones going into the adapter. So we would set it to one, two, and then we would attenuate one of the channels. 
and attenuating means bringing it at a lower volume so that in case someone's peaking or the volume gets too loud, you have kind of a backup track recording. So I would just pick up a XLR splitter and just split the signal physically before going into the adapter and kind of faking like you have two different microphones, but setting one at a lower volume. So we have the adapter on here and we're able to put one microphone, but some people want to mount other accessories, maybe an external monitor with your GH5 or maybe an LED light. So that's when we get into like rigs and cages. So we're going to show you a couple of Kame TV cages that will work with the GH5 as well as using the XLR adapter at the same time. Um, when you use the XLR adapter, one of the things that they say in the user manual is don't pick up the camera from the adapter because you could damage the adapter or the camera. Um, so Sometimes when you're building up your camera with other accessories, you want a top handle. So we're going to take a look at a couple of cages that will give you a top handle and let you add other accessories. So over here we have Kame TV's um, basic GH5 cage. I'll have a link to this product if you guys are interested. It has a 15 mil rod adapter if you want to expand with like follow focuses and map boxes and stuff. Uh, but this is the basic cage right over here. We slide this guy in. Drop a screw at the bottom here. Run that all the way down. This is one of those form-fitting cages where you still have access to all your buttons, your dials, your SD card slot, your battery door here at the bottom. Obviously, you could swing out your LCD and rotate it around. So the cage works with uh, the GH5 perfectly. We'll take a look at how the XLR adapter still fits here. Slides in over the top. Now remember, if you have the XLR adapter on the camera and you want to pick up the camera from the top, you don't want to grab it from the adapter. So they designed this handle here to work with the XLR adapter. It sits forward like this. So this handle right here is designed to fit the XLR adapter so that you could still pick up your camera here from the top. Especially if you're using like rails and a follow focus and a map box, it's going to give you better balance grabbing it from the top than trying to handle it from the side. Now, here's what it looks like with the Asden 250CX mounted on the front cold shoe of the handle. You could still use a cold shoe on the back of the adapter, but because this is a low profile microphone, it's going to get really close to this handle here. So you might want to move it a little bit forward so you could still get underneath it and uh, get your thumb underneath the microphone. Otherwise, if you put it back here, it gets a little tight. And remember on the Kame TV cage, if you're working with um, those 15 mil rods, you just put the base plate on the bottom here and then we can add our follow focus and our map box and stuff like that. All right, this next cage that we're taking a look at again is from Kame TV, but this is for like more robust builds. We still have the 15 mil rod base here. We have a quick release in here so you can get your camera in and out very quickly. You also have a lens adapter support here, which is adjustable forward, back, up and down. So if you're using things like a Metabones speed booster or something like that, you can use a tripod mount and give additional support with this lens adapter. So this is much more of a uh, full featured rig. Another thing that they're including, because this is for the GH5 and XLR adapter, is this extension cable. This allows you to use this XLR adapter um, off camera so you can mount it uh, off to the side here using this adapter to just kind of do a pass through of the signal. Again this uses a quick release system so you can get the camera in and out. There are some little ears on the front here, little tabs, and that prevents the camera from shifting on the QR plate. So we're just going to align this up. Now again, there are some little tabs on the front here and that will prevent the uh, camera from twisting on the QR plate here. So it's an anti-twist kind of tab at the top. Now we're able to slide the camera into the cage and then there's a lock back here to lock it down um, and then locks the camera in place. To release the camera, you just loosen this and you can slide the camera back out. So it's a lot easier to get it in and out of the cage if you needed to. So again, one of the most interesting thing about this cage here is the remote cable. So what we're able to do is we're able to mount this cable up here there's a thumb screw. Tighten this down. Then we add the cable to the back of the camera here. We lock it down on the back and that'll give us a pass-through signal from the hot shoe up to this area over here. Now we can add our XLR adapter here at the top. Then we just slide a handle here at the top, lock it down with this little thumb screw. No tools required. 
We can then add a microphone here to the cold shoe and we can use this cold shoe over here to maybe add an LED light. So we have more mounting points on the side here, a lot of quarter 20s, so you can add your monitor or anything else. So this is kind of a more robust type cage. Now you notice I put 250 mil rods here. This comes with the kit. So you can add, um, again, like a follow focus or a matte box. And obviously you could use any 15 mil rails if you want to go longer. Now, another thing that's different about this uh, cage here is that it comes with this sliding base plate uh, quick release. This is designed to sit on top of your tripod. And depending how big or how front heavy or rear heavy your setup is, you can get this onto the base plate. Again, this base plate is sitting on your tripod and you can slide your setup forward and back on the tripod head. This gives you a lot more balance um, so you could pull it back further or move it forward further on your tripod. Again, just for better balance. There is a quick release button here on the side so that it doesn't accidentally fall off. So it kind of locks it in place to get it off the plate. You have to press the button to slide it off. So there you go. That is a look at the Panasonic DMW XLR1 audio adapter for the Panasonic GH5. We got to take a quick look at Asden's SGM250CX, which is the new new right now, and I'll show you more about that later. Uh, but it does work perfectly with the GH5 and the XLR adapter here. We also took a look at two different Came TV cages that work with the XLR adapter. So if you guys have any questions about these products, I'm gonna have a link below this video and also on the blog, cheesycam.com.